La ciencia y la sociedad están cada día más unidas. Las últimas novedades de tecnología y los últimos descubrimientos científicos pueden verse en las noticias, pero también en las redes sociales. El interés de la gente por los temas científicos está directamente relacionado con la capacidad de poder explicarlos de manera simple. Uno de los grandes referentes en este área fue el astrónomo, astrofísico, cosmólogo, escritor y conductor de televisión Carl Sagan. Él creó la famosa serie de televisión de los 80, Cosmos, reconocida como una de las primeras en dar a conocer los avances de la ciencia de una forma sencilla, pero con datos científicamente rigurosos. What about the fourth dimension? Now, to approach that, let's consider a cube. We can imagine a cube in the following way. You take a line segment and move it at right angles to itself an equal length. That makes a square. Move that square an equal length at right angles to itself and you have a cube. Now, this cube, we understand, um, casts a shadow. And that shadow we recognize. It's, you know, ordinarily drawn in uh, third grade classrooms as two squares with their vertices connected. Now, if we look at the shadow of a three-dimensional object in two dimensions, we see that, in this case, not all the lines appear equal. Not all the angles are right angles. The three-dimensional object has not been perfectly represented in its projection in two dimensions, but that's part of the cost of losing a dimension in the projection. Claro que además fue la ciencia ficción la que le dio un lugar de importancia a los hechos científicos verdaderos. Y en este sentido, Isaac Asimov no fue solamente un gran divulgador, sino además un gran visionario. Nowadays, what people call learning is forced on you, and everyone is forced to learn the same thing on the same day at the same speed in class. And everyone is different. For some it goes too fast, for some too slow, for some in the wrong direction. But give them a chance, in addition to school, I don't say we abolish school, but in addition to school, to follow up their own bent from the start. Well, I love the, I love the vision, but what about, uh, what about the argument that machines, computers, dehumanize learning? Well, as a matter of fact, it's just the reverse. Uh, it seems to me that it's through this machine that for the first time we'll be able to have a one-to-one -one relationship between information source and information consumer, What so to mean? speak. Well, in the old days, In the old days, you used to have tutors for children. A person who could afford it would hire a pedagogue, a tutor, and he would teach the children, and if he knew his job, he could adapt his teaching to the tastes and abilities of the students, you see. But how many people could afford to hire a pedagogue? Most children went uneducated. Then we reached the point where it's absolutely necessary to educate everybody. But the only way we could do it is to have one teacher for a great many of students and in order to organize the situation properly we gave them a curriculum to teach from. So how many teachers are good at this too? Like in everything else the number of teachers is far greater than the number of good teachers. So we, we either have a one-to-one -one relationship for the very few or a one-to-many relationship for the many. Now there's a possibility of a one-to-one -one relationship for the many. Everyone can have a teacher in the form of access to the gathered knowledge of the human species. Through the libraries that are connected to the computer That's right. in my, on my desk in my home. Right. I can sit there and call up, uh, well, what if I want to learn only about baseball? Well, that's all right. You learn all you want about baseball because the more you learn about baseball, the more you might grow interested in mathematics to try to figure out what they mean by those earned run averages and the batting averages and so on. You might in the end become more interested in math than baseball if you follow your own bent and you're not told. On the other hand, someone who is interested in mathematics may suddenly find himself very enticed by the problem of how you throw a curve ball. 
and he may find himself engaged in sports physics, so to speak. Well, why not? Y en ese sentido, Isaac Asimov tenía razón. Hoy con internet uno puede aprender casi cualquier cosa a través de libros, foros o videos. Videos como los que podemos encontrar en este canal que se llama Veritasium y que permite entender la ciencia de una manera muy simple. This is uh, representing the Earth. Okay. Ooh. And this represents what do you think? Yes. Now, uh, our first uh, challenge is how far apart uh, are they? Like, roughly. Like, roughly, about that much. Okay. Uh, I guess maybe about that far, maybe. About that far? Hang on. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Roughly? Uh, yeah, okay. roughly. About like that? <laughs> I'm okay. guessing, but yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know, maybe that. <laughs> okay. Like this far? The feeling is like here. Somewhere? Rough, right there. And this is really difficult. All right, all right. Let's, let's, uh... Okay, I'm just gonna stand here. Okay. Can I? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Seat of my pants upside here. Okay. These are some images I found on a Google image search for the Earth and the Moon. Diagrams that are not to scale are pretty common. And I understand why we make them. So you can show the detail without showing all that uninteresting space in between. But they can have a problematic effect on learning because they give people the wrong idea about the relative proximities of things. Now, if we want to talk about the distance between the Earth and the Moon, yep. it's actually... It's about here. Think about this. It takes light one second to go from the Earth to the Moon. It takes eight minutes for light to travel to the Sun and four years to go to our nearest star. And then consider that there are a hundred billion stars in our galaxy and as far as we know a hundred billion galaxies in the universe. So the universe truly is bigger than we can imagine and certainly bigger than we can draw to scale.